Hello everyone and welcome to Blender Savage. So in uh, today's video we're going to go over uh, just some quick tips, some basic uh, introductory, introductory tools on how to use the uh, Blender software. So first of all you have to be aware of your 3D view window which is this uh, main window here, the dark gray area. That's where objects will be in and we'll use our shortcut keys. They have, um, you have to have your cursor inside the 3D view, inside the 3D view window for our keys to work. So for instance, hit the S key, that's the scale tool. I hit it once, then I release, move my mouse away from the object. The object has to be selected for the key to work. So I can enlarge my object. If I right click, it just turns off the tool and it restores my object to its original shape. If my key was out here in the tools panel, which is this panel here on the left side, that's the tools panel. Hit the S key, nothing happens. Hit the S key, nothing is happening. Once I move my cursor inside the 3D view, 3D view window, hit the S key, see now it's activated again. It's going to right click to turn that off. Here's a properties panel on the right. So you notice the properties panel does have uh, little icons up here. These are buttons. These give us uh, other tools to work with. I can actually uh, navigate through these. If I hover a mouse over them, I can just spin the mouse wheel, the third mouse button. I'm going to pull out these other tools. Or I can make the panel wider. I can just hover my mouse over the little dividing line here, the edge of the panel, left click, hold and drag. My cursor has to become a double-sided arrow. I can pull it out. See, now I have access to these other tools. And above the properties panel, there's a whole properties panel right here. Above the properties panel is the outliner panel. Let me get my cursor. There it is. Double-sided arrow, left click, hold and drag. And these are all my objects. So there's a camera there. I can click on the camera. See, highlights my camera. And I can left click on the lamp. Selects my lamp. I can left click on the cube. Selects my cube. If I bring in other objects, they'll also appear here. That plus sign. That's expand. I can click on there. It gives me some more details about my object. If I add uh, materials or textures to my object, they'll show um, what it has here. I can also I can also hide these uh, objects. I go to the camera. Just hit the eyeball right here. Close the eye. And now my camera is hidden. Now it does not get in the way. It does not interfere with my project. I can do the same thing with the lamp. I can bring it back up as well. See. Uh, I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, in the properties panel, here are the other different uh, buttons, different tools. Here's materials. Icons that, that looks like a marble. Looks like an orange BMW logo. I can click on it, and now I can add color to my object. But we're not going to do that today. Here's a modifier. Add modifier. These are lots of very handy tools that we can use in a future project. And this gives me uh, detailed information about my object. But we're going to put this away. We're not going to dive into the properties panel. In the bottom here, I have the bottom header. The bottom header lets me know what, what uh, mode I'm in. I'm in object mode. I can click in there and I can select the other modes as well. When modeling in Blender, you'll use object mode and edit mode heavily. And then below the uh, bottom header, I can expand this here and make this panel wider. Here's a timeline panel. This is for animating. So uh, the default is uh, 250 frames. Frames are similar to a, a cell and cell animation or a page and flipbook animation or a frame in a in film. All right, I'm going to minimize that down. So you can see here's a play button, forward, fast forward button, record button, what frame you're in, uh, how many frames are in there. We can make this longer by changing that number there. But we're just doing basic stuff today. We're not going to get into detail on that. All right, so earlier I showed you the uh, S for scale. Hit the S key, you can scale up your object, whatever is selected. If I want to commit to the scale, I can just left click or hit the enter key. It'll commit to it. Then undo is control Z. Be careful with the control Z because when you're in a edit mode, you create something in edit mode, then you go to object mode. It'll undo everything you created in edit mode, and then you have to redo it. All right, so now I'm going to go into edit mode. So I can go down here, object mode, select edit mode. I can also the tab key on my keyboard, tab, T-A-B, upper left hand corner of your keyboard. And it toggles between edit mode and object mode, see? All right, so I want to be in edit mode. And you'll also use the number pad extensively when using Blender. Here's the layout of the number pad. Make sure number lock is on. That way your keys work as you would want them to in a Blender. We are working with the uh, three dimensions here. You go back over here to Blender. See if I hold on the control key and spin the mouse wheel, I can pan from left and right. Hold on control while spinning the mouse wheel. 
or if I hold down the shift key and then spin the mouse wheel, the third mouse button, I can pan up and down. See? Modget, my object is still in the same place in space. The only thing changing is my view. All right, so make sure number lock is on when using the, the number pad. So you have seven, that'll give you the top view. Seven key for top view. See, there's a top view of my object. Let me pan that up. As you can see here, it looks like it's in three dimensions. I'm in um, perspective, top perspective. Upper left hand corner of your 3D view window will tell you what view you're in. So you want to work with ortho. Perspective is how we see, but you want to work with ortho. So I'm at five key. And 5 key will just level all this out here. Let me the 5 key. See, there we go. The Those other those other vertices back there, the rest of the cube is still there. It's not a square. It's a cube. It's a three-dimensional object. If I want to see the rest of it, I can hit the 8 key and rotate around it. See? 8 or 2. Rotate your view up or down. And then 4 and 6 rotates your view left and right. See? Hit 7 again for top view. There we go. Make sure in ortho. I can also push down on the third mouse button on the mouse wheel. While you push it down, don't spin it. I'm just pushing it down. And then while I'm holding it down, I can move my mouse. And I can rotate my view around the object. See? And I can always go back to the view by hitting one of the keys. So 7 again for top view. All right. Here's 8 and 2. Rotate up and down, which we were just doing. And 4 and 6. Rotate left and right. And 5. That toggles between ortho and perspective. 5 key. There's the perspective view. There's the ortho view, but I want to work in ortho. So when using Blender, work in ortho makes it a lot easier. One is for front view. Here's the one key. I'm looking at the front of it. it tells me up here, front ortho. And then three is for right view. I can see the right of it. See, there's the right side of it. And you'll notice the, uh, the arrow widgets. They'll change colors for the different axes. There you go. So there's the green one, the Y axis. The red arrow is the x-axis, and the blue one goes up and down is the z-axis. I can zoom in and out by spinning the mouse wheel, or by hitting plus or minus on the keyboard, on the number pad. See minus, plus, plus, plus. And always make sure number lock is on. Also watch out when you go to 7 for top view, that you don't accidentally turn off number lock, because that happens to me often, to be honest. All right, so you notice we have here top view, front view, right view. We don't have a bottom view. We don't have a back view. We don't have a left view. So to access those three other views, select one of these three and hit nine for the opposite view. So one is for front view. I can be uh, looking at the front of the object. And then if I hit nine, I can get the back view of it. All right, so here's my object. Here's front view. Hit the nine key. Boom, back view, back ortho. Seven for top view, top ortho. Then hit the nine key on the number pad, bottom ortho. And make sure you are hitting the keys on the number pad. The key, the number of keys above your keyboard will not work for the view. So you got to use the number pad. Three for right view. Hit nine, and it gives me the left view. There you go. It's the opposite view of that. And then I've hit zero. It gives me the view of the camera. This is what the camera sees. Let me exit out of there. See, there's a camera right there. I can't select it right now because I'm in edit mode. And I brought this cube into edit mode. Not the camera. The cube is in edit mode. So I can't select the camera, but I can see what the camera sees by hitting the uh, the zero key. Also, let's say my object's way out there in space somewhere. See, it's off the it's off my view. I can't find it. As long as it's selected, I can hit the decimal key, and it zooms and centers on it. The decimal key. So decimal key will zoom and center to whatever you have selected. See, right now my entire object is selected. I can deselect my entire object by hitting the A key. See, deselects everything. Nothing is glowing. Hit the A key, selects everything. Of course, I'm in a edit mode. So when I select my cube, if I was in object mode, it'll select my light source and my camera. But in edit mode, I just have one object in there. So I cannot select those. Those are not in edit mode, just my cube here. I can select just part of this cube. If I go to the bottom header, here are my three selection options. Right now, I have a vertices selection, which is just these little corners here, these little pins. I can right-click on one of them. There we go. I select that corner of my cube. These are not selected. See, they're not uh, they're not highlighted. They're that dull black color. They're not this uh, bright orange color with white. Oops, forgot to mute my phone again. Telemarketers. 
welcome to uh, the future. Nothing is private anymore. All your information is online. All right. So same thing when I hit the decimal key here. It's going to zoom and center that object that I've selected, which in this case is that vertices right there. There we go. Just centered it. I can do this. Decimal key. Centered it, but it didn't zoom in. There we go. I can zoom in now. Spin the mouse wheel. I can select another vertices there. Select one there. Select one there. If I want to select multiple vertices, uh, just like uh, other internet, excuse me, just like other computer software, hold on the shift key. And as you hold on the shift key, select the other objects. So I'm going to right click the other ones. See, I just selected these three vertices there. We're holding on the shift key. I'll hold on the shift key again and select this one. But before I do that, I want you guys to notice this. I selected this vertices and that vertices. I also selected this edge right here. And when I selected this vertices, I selected that edge. Uh, these edges are not selected because not the entire edge is selected, just uh, half of it. If I hold on shift and select this one, now it selects those entire edges. And now that I've selected all the edges surrounding this face, it also selects that entire face. See? <coughs> so to select an edge here, I'd have to select two vertices. So I select that one, hold on shift, select another one. And now I selected that edge, including the vertices. If I want to select just an edge, it'd be a lot easier if I just switch over to edge selection here. The second option inside the bottom header, a little three cubes right. See, I can just left uh, right click on an edge and it selects an entire edge. I can pull on these arrow widgets. I can pull out the edge. See, and I can make a wedge. I can undo that. Control Z, Control Z. See, there we go. If I want to select an entire face, I can select all four edges or all four uh, vertices. All right, you can go down here to edge selection in the bottom header. Excuse me, face selection in the bottom header. And I can just right click on a face, select an entire face. See, you can pull that out. I go just to vertices. And I can pull it just on a vertices. Just right click, pull in the corner of that. I want to see through my object. Let's say I want to select something back there. I can hit the Z key. It makes it transparent. And I can select whatever it's inside of, um, away from my view and select the objects away from me. See that vertices is not um, in front of me. It's behind my, my from, from, it's out of my view. Hit the Z key and make it solid again. See, the Z key just toggles between solid view and the wireframe. All right. Let's say I want to just make one side of this bigger. Go over to face selection. See, I can see through the whole thing. Make sure you get the right one. So when you do face selection, hit the Z key. for all of you. You want to select just a little black square inside your face. See, if I select up to the side, you might not select it sometimes. Sometimes you might have a very complex object with multiple faces. So you want to try to select the very center of it where the little black dot is at, little black square. And that way you reduce your likelihood of error. Now I can make this wider. I can scale it up. Let's keep for scale. It's kind of hard to use right here. As you can see, it looks all weird. So it's better that I switch over to whatever view that face is in. Because when working with Blender, you want to work on one of the views. This is just user ortho. This is not a front view, top view, or bottom view. It makes it a little more challenging to use. <laughs> all right, so I should hit at one for front view. See, now I only have to worry about two dimensions. Instead of three, I can just worry about two dimensions. When I'm in front view, I can just worry about these two dimensions. The Z axis and the uh, X axis. Hit S for scale. I can scale up from here. See, and then left click. I can push down the mouse wheel and I can rotate it around. See? And now it's scaled a lot, be a lot better. Looks like an old school TV or an old school computer monitor. S is for scale. Well, let's see, I want to extrude this out from here. So let's say I wanted to go out this way in that direction. From in front view, it's a little challenging. It's going to move towards me. Hit three for right view. Then I can see the direction it's going to go in. It'll be easier to extrude from here. So I can just hit the E key and move mouse out to the left. See, I just hit the E key once. I didn't hold it. I just clicked on it one time. Now I'm going to move a mouse outward away from it to the left. Move it inward. And it's going back into it. And it's going to look kind of weird. I'm just going to go away. And left click right there. Also, when using one of the views, you get the grid in the background. See, so you can try to measure by, you can try to measure the distance of how far you're extruding by. So here's one, two, three. These bigger grid marks, those are the blender units. And then we have these smaller blender units, divided into tenths.
Pushing the mouse wheel, rotate around. See? I got that going on right there. Let's see, I want to rotate my object. Here's three for right view. Let's see, I want it facing up. If I'm in one of these weird user views, I hit R right now for rotate. It's only going to grab this face here. So it's going to be all weird, right? It's going to be all jacked up. I'm going to right click to turn that off. Hit A one time to deselect that face. A deselects all or selects all. So now on the second A, the second time I click on A, it's going to select everything. There we go. I want it to rotate up. If I'm in user view right here, if I try to rotate up, it might not rotate in the direction that I want it to. See, it rotates all weird. Went for front view. See, now it doesn't look straight. It'll be hard to work with. So I'm going to undo that. Control Z. I made three for right view. So now that in right view, I can directly rotate it up by 90 degrees. Hit R. And then just move my mouse over. Now it's nice and straight. Let's try to leave, level that up. That looks straight enough. If you want to be precise, you can actually type in your degree. So I'm going to undo that. Control Z. Hit R. Now that I activated the R for rotate tool, you can uh, for the rotate tool, you can tell by the dotted line and the uh, double-sided arrow here, like an anchor. I'm going to type in 90, enter. See, and that rotates it by exactly 90 degrees. I can type in the degrees. So I typed in 90 and rotate it by 90 degrees. If I've done 180, it'll go all the way over here, facing the opposite direction. Remember, if you do 360, that's a perfect circle. So it'll just bring it back to where it was at. So be careful with that. I can also grab this object with G. See, at the G key, entire object selected, I can move it around. Also, I don't know exactly where I might drop it. So what I can do, I can hit one of the uh, keys for the axis. I can hit Z, X, or Y. I can move it along that axis. Hit the X key. There you go. I can move it along the X axis. So now it's nice and straight. Doesn't jump all over the place. See, if I go up and down with my cursor. Doesn't go up and down. It's still leveled along the X axis. There we go. If I don't make a duplicate of this, to make a duplicate, uh, select whatever you want to duplicate. So right now my entire object is duplicated. If I hit Shift D, I could duplicate this object. But then when I go to object mode, it'll be one object because I'm duplicating in edit mode. So let me show you guys here. I'm going to go one for front view. Shift D. See, there's my duplicate. I don't want it floating around all over the place. I'm at X. Move it along the X axis. I'm going to put it next to it. There we go. So right here, there's still independent objects. See, I can left click, excuse me, right click on the individual faces of the object. If I go to object mode, now they're one object. See, if I left, if I right click on one to select it, it's only selecting, it's selecting both of them instead of like individually selecting them. See, I can select my light source. Now you can go back to select these, and it selects both at once because they're the same object. I duplicated them in edit mode. If I duplicated them in object mode then I will not have that problem. So I'm going to go back into edit mode again. You go edit mode. And in edit mode, if you want to isolate, um, uh, do an, uh, um, select an individual object, hover over it, then hit the L key. See, it selects the whole thing for you. Because if I hit A, it's going to select both of them. Because in edit mode, they are separate objects. But I select them individually. The best way to do it is hover over that object and hit L. And I can delete it from here. If I hit uh, X or delete key in edit mode, I get multiple options to delete. So you want to go with, more, with the most basic unit, which right here is vertices. So vertices makes an object. And then you connect two vertices, you have an edge. You connect uh, three or more edges, then you get a face. I'm going to go to vertices. See, so delete the whole object. I'm going to go over to uh, object mode. There we go. And I'm going to duplicate it here. One for front view. Shift D briefly. Shift and D. D for duplicate. Move my, magic, my object over, hit the X key, move along the X axis, left click to drop it. There it is. See? I can right click on each object. Now they're individual objects. So if I select this one here, my original object, go to edit mode. See? I can't even select my other one because it's not an edit mode, just this one object here. Tab key for object mode. I'm going to select my other uh, duplicate object. Tab key, back to edit mode. See? Now this one's an edit mode. And not that object there. So I'm going to go over to vertices selection. <clears throat> if I delete uh, one of these vertices here, it's going to delete these edges because they don't, they don't have no, they will no longer be supported. So to have these edges here, to have this, these edges exist, I need two vertices to hold them up. So if I delete this vertices here, it's going to delete these edges. So I'm in X, select vertices. See, I just hollowed it out. So everything around it collapsed because there's nothing to support those objects. 
<clears throat> if I wanted to delete this face here, I can delete, I can delete the whole face, or I can just delete one of the vertices on the corner, and also delete these edges as well. Just right-click the selected, X to delete, select vertices. There we go. See? And I can undo all that as well. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. See, there we go. Remember what I mentioned earlier about um, Control Z in object mode? So let me show you what happens there. There. All right, so here's a face selection. I'm going to extrude this up. E to extrude. Pull that up. And I'll pull this out here as well. All right, so now I'm going to go to object mode. Here I am in object mode. Object still the same. Now I'm going to undo Control Z. See, I just undid all that. And did the extrusion up and to the side. I set up individual extrusions because I did two moves there. First, I extruded up, then off to the side. And they didn't just undo that one command. It did both of those things I did in edit mode. So you got to be careful. You might have a very complex object that you've created in edit mode. And then once you undo an object mode, it'll undo everything you did in edit mode. So remember to rotate. When you rotate, be in one of the views. Here's our for rotate. See? Remember to do um, rotations in a front view, top view, or right view. Because if not, if you're in a user view, it'll rotate with respect to that view. And then now it'll be hard to work with in front view or right view. See? Because now it's not uh, soft flat, it's not two dimensions. The, 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 uh, you might be looking at the object in two dimensions, but the object would would appear to be in three dimensions and it's a little harder to work with. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, ask there, or send me an email, slide in the DMs, whatever you will. And have an awesome day. Thank you.